Are you guys enjoying it so far? Wait till you hear chapter six. I wish I brought a pair of suspenders. I worked on the plan until I fell asleep. I wrote it out step by step the next morning over breakfast. When Benny and I got on the bus, we sat close to the front. Not close enough that the bus driver could hear us, but close enough that Juanita wouldn't try anything. Juanita had missed one day and I secretly hoped she missed another. It would give me time to perfect my plan. But when the bus pulled to the curb at Juanita's stop, she was standing there. I felt a twinge of terror and I felt the previous night, but I remembered grandpa's words. I took a few deep breaths and that helped. Or maybe it just made me a little lightheaded. The door opened and Juanita Johnson, a super, super villain, climbed onto the bus. Her slim frame made me look at her almost frail. She had olive skin and dark curly hair. Her brown eyes could twinkle and dance when she talked with a friend. Then she turned to daggers when she looked at me or Benny. I glanced casually out the window, trying to appear disinterested, pretending I didn't know that she could turn invisible or shock me or pick me up and throw me out the window of the bus. I took another deep breath. Stay calm, I whispered to Benny, although he already looked completely calm. Juanita made her way through the sea of green seats towards us. She's coming this way. Well, when you think about it, it's the only way she can come, Benny said. It's not like the bus is a maze or anything. Juanita walked past. For a moment, I thought she'd ignore us, but then she was there, leaning right over my shoulder. She said four words in a voice that was so low and dripping with venom. Four words that sent a chill through my stomach. Go ahead, try it. Then she was gone. For a moment, I thought she disappeared, that she'd used her superpowers to vanish. I braced for an attack. Nothing happened. I stole a glance over my shoulder. Juanita sat alone at the back of the bus. She stared out the window. Benny whispered in my ear, for somebody who's got every power in the book, she doesn't look very happy. She's a Johnson, I said, shaking my fist. Then I lowered my voice. Villains are never happy. I faced forward in my seat. Are you ready? I asked. Ready for what? Benny asked. I've got a plan, I said. We're gonna find out how the Johnsons took our powers. Benny grinned. Let's do it right now. Here on the bus? I shook my head. Not on the bus. We wouldn't be able to talk. The trick is to be in a public place with, without anybody being able to overhear. Let me show you. I pulled out my notes and a map of the school, spreading them on my leg. Okay, at lunch, you and I will meet up here at the library. Got it? <clears throat> Why the library? Benny asked. The library is right next to the cafeteria, I explained. Nobody hangs out in the library but the librarian will be there. And she, and that should be enough to keep Juanita from attacking, but still allow us to talk to her in private. Benny nodded, <clears throat> but how do we get Juanita into the library? <clears throat> Rodney has all of the Johnson's phone numbers. We're going to hide over here, deep in the stacks. I pointed to the section of the map that had all the bookcases. Once we're in place, I'll tell Rodney to send a text to Juanita. He'll tell her to go to the library. He said he can mask it so she won't see who it's from. Once she's in the library, we'll confront her and find out how her family stole our powers. Does that make sense? Got it, Benny said. Although I wish I had brought a pair of suspenders. Suspenders? Benny, what are you talking about? I have a hard time talking to girls, Benny said. I never know what to do with my hands. And if I had suspenders, I could hook my thumbs under my straps. Juanita's not a girl, I said. She's a super villain. I went over the plan again, just to be sure. When the bus stopped in front of our school, we piled off the bus. Benny and I spent a few minutes standing in the snow outside the front doors in full view of at least a dozen kids. Juanita got off the bus and without giving Benny or me a second glance, she walked inside. The bell rang, so we split up. My first class, History usually crawled by. All my teacher does was stand in front of the class and tell us how miserable life was at certain points in history. He'd say things like, you think cleaning a toilet is tough? Try emptying a chamber pot. 
but on that day, history was over before I knew it. The bell rang and I had to leave. I paused at the door outside algebra. Juanita sat at her desk, her back towards me, waiting. My teacher was nowhere in sight. That was strange. <clears throat> I believe you're late, a voice said behind me. I turned and had looked and had to look up, way up. A tall, slim man with a balding head and a bow tie towered over me. The man was old, probably 60 or more. He hunched over a little, reminding me of a gorilla. Ugh, I said, my teacher isn't here yet. I was just going in. Your teacher is here, said Gor Gorilla Man. I'm your new teacher. Your old teacher has, um, let's just say he found other things with which to occupy his time. Something wasn't right and I went in, I sat at my desk and the man walked to the front of the class. Juanita turned in her seat and stared at me. I couldn't read her face. She looked at me as if I were waiting, as she were waiting for something. I returned her gaze and until finally turned to the front of the class. I felt dizzy. The new teacher picked up a ruler and a piece of chalk. He slapped the ruler against the desktop with a crack. Quiet class. His voice was loud and clear. I'll be your teacher for the rest of the year. Mr. Ricker won't be allowed back. Allow me to introduce myself. <clears throat> the teacher went to the board and wrote his name. I felt my throat tighten. Every time I thought things couldn't sink any lower, the universe seemed to slap me upside the head and say, you ain't seen nothing yet, Buster. The man turned and looked directly at me. My name is Nicholas, but you can call me Mr. Johnson. Can't wait to hear what's next.